Hey you guys, this is Mr. Millings and in this video we are going to learn how gas that is evolved from a chemical reaction can be collected over water and from that we can figure out the pressure of that gas and perform all kinds of other stoichiometric calculations. So in this video we are going to learn how gas is collected over water and here's a little disclaimer for you. It says that prior knowledge of the topics listed below are essential before watching this video. So you need to make sure that you watch the video on the ideal gas law first and that you watch the video on Dalton's law of partial pressures second. So that way you will understand what we are talking about in this video. So let's start talking about how gas can be collected over water. So how is a gas collected over water? Well it says right here that in many cases the amount of gas evolved during a chemical reaction is of interest and since gases have such a small density it is usually not practical to collect the gas and find its mass and for gases that are not soluble in, soluble in water it is possible to collect the gas that's evolved by displacement of water from a container so let's go ahead and, and see what's happening let's suppose we have a little test tube and in this test tube right here we have hydrochloric acid and so what we're going to do is we're going to drop this piece of zinc metal in this hydrochloric acid and a chemical reaction is going to take place. A single replacement reaction is going to take place more specifically and hydrogen gas is going to start to be produced. And so we see some bubbles here. This is our hydrogen gas. And so the hydrogen gas cannot leave this test tube here because we have a rubber stopper right here. So instead the hydrogen gas is going to go into this little tube here and we see our hydrogen gas as it makes its way down this tube and so what we have right here is a little gas collecting jar that is tipped upside down in this water bath right here and so what ends up happening is the hydrogen gas that is produced during this chemical reaction between zinc and hydrochloric acid goes into this tube and what ends up happening is it ends up displacing this water that is in this gas collecting jar right here so the water level uh, uh, that is in this jar is going to begin to decrease as more and more gas fills this area right here. More and more hydrogen gas fills this area right here. But what is also happening is that the water that is in this gas collecting jar or bottle right here is also evaporating. So in this space right here we're going to have some water vapor and we're going to have some hydrogen gas. And so what ends up happening is this. We know that the atmospheric pressure is pushing down on this water that is in this water bath right here and because of that the water is going to want to the water level that is inside of this jar is going to want to move upwards since the atmospheric pressure is pushing down on this water you would think that the water pressure or I'm sorry the water level inside of this jar here is going to rise but that's not what ends up happening what ends up happening is that these molecules of gas here the water vapor and the hydrogen gas is pushing down on this water right here with a certain amount of pressure and we can assume that the atmospheric pressure that is pushing down on this water right here is going to be equal to the atmospheric pressure or equal to the pressure that the water vapor molecules and the hydrogen gas molecules are pushing down on the water that is inside of this little gas collecting jar right here okay so let's take a look at what's happening here the total pressure according to Dalton's law of partial pressures of the gases that is in this or of the gas that is in this container right here is going to be equal to the sum of the pressure of our water vapor plus the pressure of our hydrogen gas that was evolved during this chemical reaction okay so furthermore we know that the total pressure inside of this container right here is equal to the atmospheric pressure so let's suppose that the atmospheric pressure here is approximately one atmosphere the atmospheric pressure that is pushing down on this water right here is equal to about one atm well inside of this jar right here the pressure the total pressure is also equal to about one atm or one atmosphere of pressure so according to Dalton's law of partial pressures the total pressure that is inside of this container right here which we know to be one atmosphere is going to be equal to the sum of the pressure of the hydrogen gas molecules that are in here plus the pressure of the water vapor molecules that are in here and so you might be wondering well how do we know how much pressure these water molecules are exerting well we can refer to a, a table of uh, 
vapor or a water vapor pressure that you see right here. And so let's suppose we knew that this chemical reaction is taking place at 25 degrees Celsius. We can look at this table here. We can go to 25 degrees Celsius and we can see that the pressure that is exerted by our water vapor is 23.8. So we have uh, 23.8 millimeters of mercury, which is going to be equal to 0. 0.0313 atmospheres. So we know the pressure of the water uh, vapor molecules in this little container and we know the total pressure in this container. So if we wanted to get just the pressure of the hydrogen gas, to get the pressure of the hydrogen gas, we'll simply take the total pressure inside of the container and subtract the pressure of the water molecules or the water vapor molecules, and that's going to give us the pressure of our hydrogen gas. So understand this concept, understand what's happening when we're collecting gas over water. And from this, what we can now do is we can start to solve some stoichiometric problems where we're asked to figure out how much of a, uh, a reactant was consumed during a chemical reaction based on the amount or number of moles of gas that fills this container right here. So let's take a look at a few examples and hopefully you catch on. So in this first example, it says 1.83 liters of methane gas was collected over water at 300 K and 0.85 atmospheres. We want to find the volume, the dry volume of our methane gas at STP. And so keep in mind, whenever you see STP, that just means that the temperature is 273 K and that the pressure is going to be one atmosphere, okay? And so we know one thing about a gas at STP. We know at STP, one mole of any gas is going to equal 22.4 liters or is gonna occupy 22.4 liters of space. So that's going to be an important consideration here later on, but let's take a look now at what's happening. We have 1.83 liters of methane gas collected over water at 300 K and a pressure of 0.85 in atmospheres. And so what this is telling us is that the atmospheric pressure here, our atmospheric pressure when this gas was collected was equal to 0 0.85 atmospheres. And if we take a look, the gas was collected over water. So what we need to do is figure out the vapor pressure of water at 300 K. So at 300 K, the temperature is 300 K, but if we take a look at our chart here, this is in degrees Celsius. So we need to convert this to degrees Celsius. We're going to subtract 273 and we're going to end up with 27 degrees Celsius. And if we take a look at our vapor pressure chart here at 27 degrees Celsius, we have a pressure, a vapor pressure of 26.7 millimeters of mercury. However, we need to convert this to atmospheres, right? We need to convert this to atmospheres. So let's go ahead and convert this to atmospheres. At 27 degrees Celsius, we have 26.7 millimeters of mercury. We're gonna go ahead and divide that by 760, right? Let's take a look. To get the pressure of our water vapor, we are gonna have a vapor pressure of 26.7 millimeters of mercury. And we know that one atmosphere is 760 millimeters of mercury. And so when we put this in our calculator, we're gonna end up with 0 0.0351 atmospheres. So our water vapor pressure is 0 0.0351 atmospheres. So how do we get the total pressure of the gas that was collected over water? Well, to get the total pressure of the gas, we take the atmospheric pressure minus the water vapor pressure. So to get the pressure of our gas, which in this case is methane, we're gonna take the atmospheric pressure, which is equal to 0 0.85 atmospheres, minus our water vapor pressure, which is 0 0.0351 at atmospheres, and we will end up with, let's see here, 0 0.85 minus 0 0.0351. And it looks like we will end up with a pressure of 0 0.8149 atmospheres 
Okay, so approximately this. We're not really using significant figures, which we should be. However, the pressure of our methane is going to be 0 0.8149 atmospheres. This is not our final answer now. If we take a look, the question here is to find the dry volume at STP. So what we now have to do is we now have to use the ideal gas law. We know that P times V equals N times R times T. And then now what we can do is we know the volume. We know the volume of our gas. Our volume here is 1.83 liters. We know the pressure now. Our pressure is going to be equal to 0 0.8149 atmospheres. We know the temperature. The temperature here is 300 K. And so what we can do is we can plug this into our ideal gas law right here and we can solve for N. And so if we divide both sides by R and T, we divide both sides by R and T, this will cancel. And so to get the number of moles of gas, we simply take PV over R times T. The pressure here of our gas is 0 0.8149 atmospheres times our volume. Our volume is 1.83 liters. And we're going to divide this by R, which is our universal gas law constant, 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres over moles Kelvin times the temperature, which is 300 K. And don't forget that when you put this in your calculator, if you're going to multiply these two terms in the denominator, go ahead and put this in parentheses and you should get the correct answer. So we're going to take 0 0.8149 times 1.83 divided by 0 0.0821 times 300. And we're going to end up with, it appears, 0 0.60, I'm sorry, 0 0.0605 moles. This is not our final answer though. This is just the number of moles of our methane gas. What we now have to do is figure out the volume, right? We want to figure out the volume of this gas. So we know because this is happening at STP, if we take this one step further, one mole of a gas, in this case methane gas, is going to occupy 22.4 liters. And so all we need to do now is multiply this by 22.4 and we're going to end up with approximately 1.36. 1.36 liters. All right, so there's a lot going on in this problem, right? We had to figure out first what the pressure of our methane gas was. We could then throw that into PV equals NRT and solve for N. Once we do that, we know because this is happening at STP, we simply need to multiply the number of moles times 22.4 and we end up with 1.36 liters. All right, let's take a look at another example. In this second example, it says that hydrochloric acid is going to react with zinc metal to produce hydrogen gas according to the reaction below. So in this chemical reaction, we have hydrochloric acid reacting with zinc metal, and that's going to end up producing zinc chloride and hydrogen gas. And if we read further, it says if 0 0.75 liters of hydrogen gas is collected over water at this temperature right here, while a barometer in the lab shows the atmospheric pressure to be 1.15 atmospheres, then what mass of zinc is consumed during the chemical reaction? So if we take a look, there's a lot going on here. And first of all, what we know is we know that this hydrogen gas here is collected over water, and we know how much hydrogen gas was produced. We know that there was 0.75 liters of hydrogen gas produced. And from this, we want to figure out how much zinc or how many grams or what mass of zinc was consumed in this chemical reaction to produce this many liters of hydrogen gas. So in this problem, what we have to do is we have to set up three different steps or we have to, we have to uh, solve this in three different steps. And so in our very first step, what we will do is we are going to figure out the pressure of our hydrogen gas. Once we figure out the pressure of our hydrogen gas, what we can then do is plug it into PV 
equals nRT, or the ideal gas law, and we can solve for n. Or the number of moles of gas. n is the number of moles of gas. And once we figure out the number of moles of gas, we can then, in step three, do some stoichiometry to figure out the mass of zinc that was produced. So let's go ahead and start this problem. Let's start off with step number one. In step number one, we want to figure out the pressure of the hydrogen gas that was produced. So it says right here, to get the pressure of our gas, we're going to take the atmospheric pressure, which it tells us is 1.15 atmospheres, and we're going to subtract the vapor pressure of water. So how do we get the vapor pressure of water? Well, if we take a look, this is all happening at a temperature of 310 K. But if we look at our vapor pressure of water chart, this here is in degrees Celsius. So we have to subtract 273 and we're going to end up with 37 degrees Celsius. And if we take a look at our chart now, the pressure of our H2 gas or the uh, vapor pressure of our H2O gas, sorry, at 37 degrees, if we take a look at our chart here, is going to be 47.1. But if we take a look closely, this is in millimeters of mercury. Millimeters of mercury, we want this to be in atmospheres, though, so we can plug it into the ideal gas law formula. And when we plug it into the ideal gas law formula, our pressure needs to be in atmospheres. So how do we convert this to atmospheres? Well, we know that one atmosphere is equal to 760 millimeters of mercury. And so we'll put this in our calculator and we end up with 0 0.0620 atmospheres. So we now know the pressure or the vapor pressure of our water is 0 0.0620. So 0 0.0620. And so, to get the pressure of our hydrogen gas, we simply take the atmospheric pressure, 1.15 atmospheres, minus the vapor pressure of water. Let me add the unit here, which is going to be 0 0.0620 atmospheres. And we're going to end up with, let me put this in the calculator here, one point zero eight eight atmospheres so this is not our final answer this is just the pressure of the hydrogen gas that was collected over water so what we can now do is we can now use this value this p value in step two to figure out how many moles of hydrogen gas were produced in this chemical reaction so let's take a look in step two We'll do this right here. We know that PV equals N times R times T. And what we want to do is we want to solve for N. We want to figure out the number of moles of hydrogen gas that were produced. So R and T are going to cancel. And so it looks like to get the number of moles, we're going to take P times V and divide that by R times T. And so if we take a look, our pressure we just figured out was one point. 088 atmospheres times the volume if we take a look the volume of our gas was 0 0.75 liters r is the universal gas law constant 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres over moles kelvin and our temperature here is 310 k Whenever we use the ideal gas law formula, the temperature needs to be in Kelvin. And so if you're going to put this in your calculator and you're going to multiply the denominator, you have to make sure that you put parentheses in your calculator. So we have 1.088 divided by 0 0.7, I'm sorry, times 0 0.75. And we're going to divide this by parentheses 0 0.0821 times 310. And we end up with 0 
moles. So this is how many moles of hydrogen gas were produced in this chemical reaction. This is not the final answer. What we now need to do in step three is we have to figure out how much zinc was consumed, how much zinc here was consumed if 0 0.0321 moles of hydrogen gas were produced. So we have 0 0.0321 moles of hydrogen gas that were produced. We now need to use some stoichiometry to figure out how many grams of zinc were consumed. So we have 0 0.0321 moles of hydrogen gas. If we take a look here, our very first step is going to be to multiply by our mole ratio. If we compare our zinc to our hydrogen gas, our balanced chemical equation is showing us that there's an imaginary one here. So there is one mole of zinc for every one mole. There's an imaginary one here as well. Every one mole of H2 gas. If we look now, we see moles of H2 cancels. And so we're left with moles of zinc, but we don't want to find moles of zinc. We want to figure out how many grams of zinc this is. So now we have to get our periodic table of elements out, and we have to find the molar mass of zinc. And so if we look on our periodic table, we know one mole of zinc is 65.38 grams of zinc. And so we take 0 0.0321, 0 0.0321, times 65.38 and we end up with 2.1 2.1 what moles of zinc cancels leaving us with grams of zinc and this is going to be our final answer and if we take a look we have two sig figs here we have two sig figs here we have three sig figs here our final answer can only contain two significant figures. So in this chemical reaction, if 0.75 liters of hydrogen gas was produced or collected at this temperature and at this pressure right here, how much zinc or what mass of zinc was consumed during this chemical reaction? 2.1 grams of zinc was consumed during this chemical reaction. If you like what you see, go ahead and click that little bomb in the bottom right hand corner and that will subscribe you to my channel. And feel free to leave any comments or questions down in the comment section down below. And I hope you guys found this helpful.